This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Please go to squarespace.com forward slash forge to check them out and start building your website today. Welcome back to the workshop. It's fantastic to have you here. This is my new to me German Bernsdorfer power hammer. It's got a 70 kilo RAM and there was absolutely no reason whatsoever for me to purchase it. I've already got a perfectly good power hammer, but I've only used it twice and it doesn't even make that good coffee anyway. Now the Bernsdorfer is a two-piece power hammer. That's one less than three, and it means that the anvil slips inside the body of the machine and is separate. The trouble is, it's a lot more complicated. On a one-piece machine, the base just sits flat on the ground. If you need to move it around, it's one single lift. Two-piece power hammers are meant to require foundations and a whole manner of complexity in arranging it. We don't want any of that. Now, I like simplicity. So, in order to make it one, what we're gonna need is a base. So let's take some measurements. I actually don't need to do this. Jamie already took measurements. Thank you, Jamie. Are they good measurements, though? Jamie! I knew it! I knew I shouldn't have trusted you. What? What's going on? Almost made a grave mistake. 37. 27. <laughs> <laughs> How many other mistakes are there? Just tell me now before I order a thousand pounds of steel. Well, I put some in just to, you know, just to throw some curveballs in there. <laughs> right, I've texted the dealer. We're gonna get a price back. We can get a timeline on delivery. And soon we get fabricating. So in the interest of trying to do everything that we can do, what we'd like to do is see if we can replace these copper lines. These feed in the oil that helps lubricate all this and make sure it doesn't seize. They've got a beautiful glass little kind of peephole so you can see the oil flow that you have. I think these are really lovely features and it'd be quite a shame if in order to change the copper lines we had to remove this whole assembly but let's see what it all looks like when we take it apart because I've never seen anything quite like this so there's a little screw a hole in the screw that lines up with a hole in the pipe I bet this is soldered to the pipe that's probably what's happening very neat little setup to left with a slight challenge let's get this second line off ah I mean oh no <laughs> you <laughs> so it definitely looks like this is a steel fitting that's soldered to the copper. You certainly don't want to break the steel fitting. No way. That already came off? Holy crap. That's incredible. It smells delectable as well. This is all ready for when the order of plumbing parts comes. So we'll put these somewhere safe. And in order for us to be able to clean up the back side of this, we're gonna do something incredibly stupid. What could possibly go wrong? Come on, Jamie, what could go wrong? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I'm gonna move these two befores so I can get a better lift, because it's not balanced right now. I hate lifting things with poor equipment. You know, in the Montana shop, I have a $10,000 forklift. And here I am using ancient Egyptian technology instead. Ah, ah, it moved! There's a very slight grade this way. Look, I'm a unicorn! You dickhead ball, I. With a lot of Jamie's help, we've got this thing stripped down. We got all the paint off. We took the wire wheels to it, gave it a good scrubbing. And I have to say, it's looking rather fantastic. We've been humming and hawing about what our next step is. Do we paint this or do we leave it in its raw, natural, beautiful state and just oil it up? I think we just oil it up. Now on a more serious note, let's talk about wire wheels. You generally have kind of two different type of wire wheels. You have either a straight strand wire wheel, like this, in either a cup brush or a disc, or a twisted knot wire wheel, either in a disc or in a cup. The straight strands are much less aggressive. These are much more aggressive. You can often find that they're too aggressive, but there's a safety concern to be aware of between the two. And that is that the straight strand ones throw the wires really hard really far and really fast. As you can see, I am completely and totally covered in wires stabbed into my 
wonderfully protective steels. So because I'm wearing the right clothing, I'm all right, but you've got to be aware of it. And it can actually be so serious, the velocity at which these are thrown out, you could end up in hospital. My mother at one point in time was doing a ton of furniture restoration and she was restoring these handrails that were in cast iron and she was wire wheeling for days and days and days and all of a sudden got an infection in her leg, went to the hospital, they did an x-ray and one of these wires that had embedded itself two inches deep in her thigh, had to go into general anesthetic to get the thing cut out. So be careful, wear protective clothing, especially while you're wheeling, know the direction of travel, and I don't have anything else. Well, I'll do that. The next step on this is replacing those copper lines that we removed the other day as we've just received a shipment of plumbing supplies. So I've never worked with copper pipe plumbing like this before, but what I do know is going to be a real risk is accidentally ending up with kinks in the copper pipe. So in that case, we're not going to want these, but we will want this. This is a pipe bender. It'll mean we get good radii in our bends. Look how adorable that little pipe cutter is. So you screw it on, give it a spin. <laughs> <laughs> this is a pipe flaring tool. And I guess what it does is it drives a cone into the copper, spreading it out and flaring it. I'm glad I did a test piece because we're gonna need a few more. That is awful. I'm not being a very good plumber so far, but we're gonna move forwards. In order to work out how much copper pipe it is that we need to cut, we're gonna straighten out the existing ones. Credit where credit is due. I learned this technique from this YouTube video. Pretty awesome. Now it's on to soldering those steel fittings back on. We've got two options. We have this lead-free solder. It had a hefty markup on it though. It says 99 cents. I'm pretty sure that was about five quid. And I've also got this brazing rod. This one melts at a considerably higher temperature. So we're gonna first start with this one. We're gonna clean these out. Oh my gosh, I think it worked. It was very messy, but not bad for my first time. Soldering is fun. We made up some brackets to hold the pipe on the hammer. So I'm not sure exactly how we're gonna do this, but somehow without bending the rest of the pipe and bending it exactly only where it specifically needed to be bent, we need to install it. This stuff is really fragile. It's annealed, so it's very soft. And even in handling it and walking around, you get little bends. We want it to look clean. We want it to look straight where it's got to be straight. And somehow, we've got to bend it where it's got to be bent. Jamie has prudently advised that we do a test bend. What we want to learn is where this bender puts different reference points. If I want the center of the pipe bent here, that point should be the middle of our 90 degree point. Bend it round, and that worked fabulously. Uh, Let's give it a shot. No, we just can't make the bend that close. Let's that might that, be right. See, see what it looks like? Nah, it's not good, is it? That's awful. Oh boy, <laughs> that's not what we wanted. <laughs> Change of plans, send it like this. We'll let this guy just chill out here for a second. Get used to his new home. That one's like a slight bend here, or we do like a nice little dog leg. You wanna go grab one from inside? So this comes across to here. We now want another bend right there to send it in, and then we're gonna go down. Now have a look at that. For a completely non-plumber, I'm really chuffed with how that ended up. Looks steampunk, looks industrial. This is the type of stuff I love. The colors on this machine are fantastic. So I've got my pipe ending here and it is awaiting the oil pump, which Jamie has been working on cleaning up. Unfortunately, wire wheels and glass don't go together very well. We found you can't wire wheel glass seeing things. It was an accident. I didn't think it was going to survive it. I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, we're going to need to find a way to close that hole in the tank. But since that glass has now been ground into the contents of this, we need to get this lid off 
empty out and clean the inside, but the lid is cross-threaded. We'll see, without destroying the plastic, because this is plastic, we can unscrew it, and yes we can. Oh, that's so cool. Never seen anything like that. Oh, look at that. Oh, maybe we got lucky and not too much of the actual uh, grit ended up inside. Hope you don't mind that I use your mug here, Jamie. Oh, that's just so cool. There's even a thimble in there in case you feel like getting your haberdashery on. So let's have a look at how this works. This pulley that powers the pump is powered by the flywheel. There is a worm inside the pump. It is turning this gear and have a look at that unbelievable design to alternate the pumping of the two outlets on the pump. I've never seen anything like that. That's incredible. We've cleaned out any excess crud, let's put it back together. The lid doesn't have teeth after all. All right, let's see if it fits. Let's see if the holes line up. What are you even on about? These are already pre-drilled, of course it's going to fit. All right, Jamie, what time is it? Seven minutes to four. All right, so Jamie's got to get back to the city tonight because he's got a hot date, which means that we have seven minutes to somehow get this copper into this thing. On with the olive. This is looking bloody brilliant. I'm chuffed with how the copper lines are looking. Jamie, thank you for all your help. Hope you guys go check out our restock of pants as well as grinders at Alex Steel Co. But I hope even more that you can make the money to buy our products and you can do that by having an awesome website. Today's episode has been sponsored by Squarespace, which is the all-in-one website building platform that means that you're never gonna patch, fix, or upgrade anything on your site ever again. Designing your website couldn't be easier or more intuitive. It's drag and drop. And it's so simple that even a dog could build an incredible website. Squarespace e-commerce is unbelievably powerful, allowing you to sell unlimited products, physical and digital. You can connect with your audience and generate revenue using their members areas with gated, paid for content. If you also sell your products in person, you can use Squarespace's point of sale. And every single bit of confusion and difficulty is dealt with by Squarespace because you can even buy your domain from them at an unbelievably inexpensive price. They've got 24 seven award-winning customer support and if that's not good enough, you can get a 14-day free trial at squarespace.com forward slash forge. And if you use code forge at checkout, you'll get 10% off your first purchase. So please get out there, build yourself a website, showcase what you do to the world. Thank you for watching. See you very soon. Bye-bye.